Well, while we get the um, first presentation going, um, here I have a model of uh, the Burj Khalifa, uh, one of the, to the tallest, actually, uh, building in the world in Dubai. This is a 1 over 500 uh, uh, model where we have uh, some sensors, acceleration sensors, that will be manually uh, exciting the structure, and then we'll see real-time data being processed, and final report will be given. Uh, the title of this presentation is Emergency Response Planning. You know, um, it, it, this is the latest project we did in, in Dubai. My name is Mauricio Ciudad Real. I'm based here in Pasadena, but lately most of our projects are in the Middle East. Here is the problem they're facing currently. Uh, shaking from distant earthquakes causes mass evacuations in that area. This, uh, in particular, these uh, pictures here showing uh, people evacuating buildings um, in uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and the earthquake happened in Iran, hundreds of kilometers far away. So these tall and super tall structures are susceptible to this long period, uh, you know, uh, long duration shaking. And then the problem is the occupants, the decision makers, and, uh, and everybody is unprepared. And therefore, the business gets disrupted, and that costs money. So what is the solution? Well, the solution is implementing an SHM, you know, for emergency management and business continuity. This enables post quick assessment for very informed decision making, obtaining and disseminating critical response data information, and implementing a streamlined on-site response action plan. Multiple players on this problem get benefited out of this. The facility managers, the building occupants, the building owners, and the policy makers as well. So what is the actual solution in terms of what do we do? What kind of sensors and, or technology we put together? Well, our approach is very simple. We have uh, acceleration sensors throughout the structure. And we also have wind sensor because wind also plays an important role in that particular part of the world. We collect data and then we process that data, obtaining a global response, which is interstory drift. But if you come with the building manager and tell it, well, your interstory drift is this much, it won't tell them anything. You need to translate that into something that they can understand and act upon. So what we do is we come from data into information and provide them with this traffic light concept. So they can tell immediately, okay, what is the state of my structure? Even if the occupants had already evacuated, they can tell, well, it's okay to come back. So in order to get to that point, obviously we had to do first evaluation of the structure in order to determine a performance-based capacity levels. And based on that, you have the alarms. In order to do this, you need to collect and study the plans, do your uh, FEM model, and so on. The actual system it consists of, as I said already, some acceleration sensors, collect the data, you provide some information, and then the response planning, which is part based on the standards like ATC20 um, for post-event evaluations. And training is a very important part. Because if you have a system like this, it won't do anything if the um, actual users of this information don't know what to do in case of emergency. So this is just a picture of the um, uh, occasion of the opening of the, of the system, but I want to switch back to the actual system here. Let me first uh, set up the alarms, and then uh, we quickly gonna excite the, the structure, and then we will see. Um, I have only four sensors, obviously, but uh, at the real structure, we have uh, a total of 48 sensors distributed. So I'm gonna, you know, simulate the one of these uh, long period, long shaking. And hopefully the system, while well, it's already triggered, you can see it reaches uh, the yellow trigger level. And then um, if I had checked it even stronger, probably we reach the evacuation level, which is red. 
just one last thing, which is showing the final result of this is actually this, um, this report, which immediately tells them, okay, what is the alarm level that I have reached? And then, in addition to that, obviously, interstory drift won't tell anything to the operators, but along with this is a response plan with checklist of the stuff they need to do in order to keep the business going. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>